This is Anthony Carter, a former NBA player that you've probably never even heard of. Played 13 seasons in the league and averaged about 5 points per game. And back in 2003, Anthony made a mistake that changed the entire course of NBA history. In 2003, Anthony Carter played for the Miami Heat, who were struggling at the time but managed to draft a young, talented guard by the name of Dwayne Wade. Going into the 2003-2004 NBA season, Anthony was on a decent-sized contract with the Heat, a contract that spanned from 2000 to 2004. But before the start of the season, Anthony and his representation needed to file paperwork to opt into the one remaining season of his contract. They forgot to do this. Anthony Carter's agent was supposed to fax a notification to the Miami Heat stating that Carter would be exercising his player option for the upcoming season. But he never did this. And because of this, Anthony's contract was completed, he didn't return to the Heat the next season, and the Heat no longer needed to pay Anthony the $4 million he would have received if he remained on the team. Now, in terms of NBA money, $4 million ain't that much. But that extra $4 million cleared the Heat's cap space from $7 million to $11 million, which was enough for them to go out and sign Lamar Odom. Lamar went on to have a stellar season with the Heat that year, but his biggest contribution to Miami did not happen on the court, because in the following season, the Heat flipped Lamar Odom for a different big man, a guy you've probably heard of before, named Shaquille O'Neal. And with Shaq pairing up with a young and rapidly improving Dwayne Wade, the Heat would eventually win an NBA championship in the following season. Anthony Carter forgetting to fax over his contract agreement to the Miami Heat directly led to them winning a championship. But the impact of Anthony's forgotten fax does not end there. Because the Heat traded Lamar Odom to the Lakers, where he became Kobe Bryant's right-hand man and was a critical component to a Lakers squad that won back-to-back -back championships. Championships that solidified the legacy of Kobe Bryant. All of this because an NBA journeyman you've never even heard of made one mistake. But wait, there's more. With Shaq's massive contract bloating the Heat's payroll, the team decided to trade Shaq in February of 2008 to the Phoenix Suns for an equally expensive Sean Marion, who they flipped the following season for another equally expensive Jermaine O'Neal who left the team in 2010, clearing an enormous chunk of cap space, giving the Miami Heat enough room to sign, you guessed it, LeBron James and Chris Bosh. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the butterfly effect when a small and seemingly insignificant occurrence has a rippling effect through time, leading to a consequential event sometime long after the initial event. Or, as Google would put it, the phenomenon whereby a minute localized change in a complex system can have large effects elsewhere. But the forgotten facts is not the only butterfly effect Dwayne Wade has been a part of. During the late 90s and early 2000s, the Miami Heat were one of the most winningest teams in the NBA, finishing five straight seasons as a top three seed in the Eastern Conference. But the tides quickly turned for the Heat as they fell from a 50-win powerhouse in 2001 to a 36-win team far from playoff contention the very next season. Their struggles continued as the following season they would fall from a 36-win team to a mere 25 wins, one of the worst seasons in franchise history. Fortunately in the NBA, the worse the record, the better the draft pick. So with the 2002-2003 season coming to a close and one of the most loaded draft classes in NBA history just months away, the Miami Heat decided to tank. After losing 10 of their last 12 games, the Heat were on track to a great draft pick and potentially the future of their franchise. Which leads us to the last game of the season, the Heat versus the Raptors. But little did they know, the Raptors were tanking as well. We never play to lose. We're two teams that are having bad years, but this isn't a joke. Even though a lot of fans want to see us get the fourth pick, I think that the true fans were probably at home going, that's good, they ain't give up. So the final game of the season came down to a tank off. And in the most petty game of the NBA season, the Heat came out on top in a thrilling fourth quarter comeback victory. The players who led the comeback for the Heat, Razul Butler, Ken Johnson, Sean Lampley, Lafonso Ellis, and Vladimir Stepania. This comeback should have never happened. The Heat should have never won that game, but they did. And as a direct result of this, the Raptors landed the fourth overall pick in the draft and the Heat had to settle for the fifth overall pick. Now, if the Heat had gotten the fourth overall pick in the draft, they would have picked Chris Bosh. Pat Riley, the Heat president at the time, has said this on multiple occasions. If Bosh was available, they would have picked him. So, in the most poetic fashion imaginable, the team that out-tanked the Heat 
picked Chris Bosh in the 2003 draft with the fourth overall pick. The organization was ecstatic. Mission accomplished, they got the big man they needed. Meanwhile, the Heat had to settle with the fifth pick, and they got a young guy out of Marquette, some two guard named Dwayne Wade. The face of their franchise for the next 13 years and the greatest Heat of all time. If Miami would have lost that last game, that one measly game that they were supposed to lose, if Razul Butler didn't have the best fourth quarter performance of his life to secure a victory over Toronto, the Heat would have gotten the fourth pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, they would have drafted Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade would have been a Toronto Raptor, drastically changing the landscape of the NBA for the next two decades. It was the worst victory a team could have at the time that ultimately turned it into the best victory because of obviously the draft that came and who came with it next. And once again, the Miami Heat managed to flip mistakes of marginal NBA players into generational talent and championships. Because sometimes, a curse in the moment can become a blessing in disguise. Like when Kevin Durant's injury in the 2019 NBA Finals actually saved another player's life. Sounds impossible, right? Well, let's back it up for a moment. Back in 2016, NBA player Karis LeVert was drafted to the Brooklyn Nets, a late first round pick, and for the next couple years, he played like a late first round pick. Nothing terrible and nothing spectacular, just a solid NBA player. But after the 2019 NBA season, the Brooklyn Nets did a complete overhaul of their roster. And with only seven players returning to the team, most of these returning players would get a massive promotion in the Nets rotation. Well, everyone except Karis LeVert, since part of the Nets overhaul included the addition of Kevin Durant, who at the time played the same position as LeVert did. But wait. In the 2019 NBA Finals, Kevin Durant had a season-ending injury. In fact, he would miss the entire following season as well, and the Nets knew this. So Karis got a huge boost in minutes and was given a more aggressive role on offense, and he made the most of it by having by far the best season of his entire career. But while Karras was putting up great numbers hoping to keep his role, the Nets only saw his trade value increase each and every day. And on January 13th, 2021, in possibly the most complicated trade I've ever seen in my life, the Brooklyn Nets traded Karras LeVert to the Indiana Pacers, his stellar play in the previous season skyrocketing his trade value, making the transaction extremely beneficial to the Nets in the form of James Harden. But after undergoing a routine physical before suiting up for the Indiana Pacers, Karras noticed that the results were taking a lot longer than usual. Karras was in good health, only 26 years old coming off the best season of his life. So at the time, he really didn't think much of it. During LeVert's physical, they discovered a small mass on his kidney. They found that mass on his kidney because of that trade. Trade may have saved his life. Just days after being traded to the Pacers, doctors discovered a mass in Karras' left kidney, a cancerous tumor, something that, if not discovered early on, can and will eventually become life-threatening. But after discovering this, Karras LeVert immediately took action and underwent surgery to remove the tumor. And within two months, Karras was back on the court with the Pacers and finished the season with the best stretch of games in his entire career. If Kevin Durant never got hurt in the 2019 Finals, he would have played in the 2019-2020 NBA season and would have taken considerable minutes from Karras, which means that Karras would have never developed into an all-star caliber guard and his trade value would have never increased enough for the Nets to trade him in company for James Harden. And if they never trade Karras to the Pacers, Karras doesn't get the MRI that led to the discovery of the cancerous tumor a series of unfortunate events that somehow led to the best conclusion possible. But as crazy as these butterfly effects are, there's one butterfly effect that has completely shaped the entire history of the NBA for the last 55 years. One decision that has created the NBA we see today. This is George Mikan. For those who are unfamiliar, Mikan is the OG NBA GOAT. Before Jordan, before Bird and Magic, before Kareem and Julius, before Wilt and Russell, there was George Mikan. To give you some perspective, George Mikan played an entire NBA career, retired, and was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame before Wilt Chamberlain even played his first NBA game. It doesn't get more OG than this. And during Mikan's time in the NBA, he was the big man of the league. 
245 pounds in the 1940s, which is pretty much like being 8 foot 2 inches tall and 370 pounds in today's league. He dominated the post and paved the way for a league controlled by bigs. And after he retired from the NBA, he continued to stay active in the basketball world, becoming the head coach of his former team, the Minneapolis Lakers, which he quickly discovered wasn't a great fit for him. But a decade later, a new basketball league arose. A league that would rival the NBA called the American Basketball Association. Or as you may know it, the ABA. The first commissioner of the ABA, the legend himself, George Mikan. And with his newfound position, Mike immediately set out to make big changes. A new red, white, and blue basketball, the slam dunk contest we all know and love today, embracing a playground-like style with more flair than the NBA ever had at the time, Mike also introduced a completely new aspect to the game. The single most revolutionizing change the game has ever seen. A new shot, something we now know today as the three-point shot. At the time, this was seen as a bit of a gimmick, a cheap trick to draw more attention than the NBA. Not many players took this change seriously. Steve Jones was the league leader in three-point percentage that first season, the world's first sharp shooter. He made 23 threes throughout the entire season. A guy named Ben Warley was a top five three-point shooter that season. He made 0.7 threes a game. The shot was so new and experimental that players had to be reminded that regardless of how far you shoot the ball, it was still a three-pointer. Doesn't matter if it's 22 feet out or 60 feet out. But the fans loved it, and slowly ABA players embraced the change and discovered the power of the long ball. But the NBA was not on the same page, refusing to add the gimmicky shot to their game. For years, while ABA players were splashing it from deep, NBA players were sticking to the tried and true inside game. But in 1976, the two basketball worlds came together when the NBA and ABA merged, with the NBA adding the top ABA teams to their league and also adding some of the ABA's gimmicks. The dunk contest became a staple of the NBA's All-Star Weekend, the NBA became a more flashy, above-the-rim league, and eventually, they added the three-point shot. A shot that has taken over the NBA and has led to some of the most memorable and incredible moments was created by a man that set the gold standard for post players. George Mikan lived in the paint, and yet it was his foresight and innovation that gave us the long ball that dictates the game today. A shot that George Mikan never even considered taking in his day. The original big man, a man who was born nearly 100 years ago, changed the game more than anyone else ever has. And that's the butterfly effect. When one person's actions spur a series of events that lead to something much, much bigger. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, until next time.